Hello and welcome. This is the third video in a series of videos detailing the use of MasterFrame and MasterFrame Pro. In this video, we're going to be looking at the creation of level references. To create levels, we go to the Create menu and select Add Edit Levels and their global data. We will now create new levels at the base and at the top of the structure. Looking at the Y coordinates of the structure, we can see that these Y coordinates are at 0 and at 3.5. Adding a new level, the default Y value being 0, we can call this floor, and adding a second level at 3.5, and we can call this level 1. The creation of these levels will then automatically create views of the levels, just like we have automatic views of the grid lines. This is one of the key advantages to using levels in the MasterFrame standard. Where you have MasterFrame Pro, levels are again optional but even more desirable as global level data can be attributed to a level in relation to its basic, default loading and construction type. To activate the MasterFrame Pro, Area Loading and Floor Construction Facilities, we click on the Area Loading option. With the Area Loading option on, we now have additional attributes that can be defined on a level-by-level -level basis. At our level, we have our level name and Y value as before, but in addition we now have a series of default values in the various different load groups available to us for this particular level in this structure. So for example, if we wish the default dead load for level 1 at 3.5 to be 2.5 kN with a live load of 5 kN, that specifies the default loading for this level to be these values. In subsequent areas, we do then have to specify the area loading panels in the appropriate sections of the level with their directions of span, however. This will denote the default values of the load at this particular level. Levels can be created where no structure currently exists. We can simply now say that we have another level at 7 meters. We'll call this level 2. It may be convenient to copy levels and their data, however, multiple levels can be selected and their information edited as one operation. So, with levels 1 and 2 selected, we are now specifying that these are the values for both levels. The method of construction can also be specified at the level by saying that we would like the facility for some composite construction. With the facility for composite construction in place, we now get additional data on the construction type. Without the composite construction activated in the structure, the default method of construction is standard construction. With the composite construction activated, we can now specify under composite properties for each level, whether it uses a profiled metal deck, setting the condition to be true or false, and whether it is using composite interaction between the steel beams and the metal deck by similarly setting the condition of the composite option. We can also include some default separate loading parameters, which are specific to composite type construction. Where the metal deck is set to profiled, we can specify from the Metal Deck Profile drop-down list, the global metal deck profile from the library of metal deck profiles. By setting profile to false, this defaults the composite level to a solid slab. The thickness of the solid slab can be defined under slab thickness. If you also then have hollow core dimensions in the solid slab, those can be specified by expanding the hollow core unit option. Any of this data can be specified for multiple levels by multi-selecting the levels and editing the data in one operation. With the levels now in place, we will see that we have automatic levels at the floor plan and plan at level 1. By quickly moving to an isometric view we can see this is visible. And also the roof plan. The name roof plan is given as an automatic name for the top level. In this case we have no structure present at this level. If we do select this level, we can now go and create structure at this level where no structure currently exists. Also, you'll find when creating new structure that the levels play an important part in the drafting of new members. When adding a new generic member using the add member facility, members can be freely drawn between graphical selection points. This will be covered in greater detail in subsequent videos. However, if we were to draw a member vertically, the level definitions allow for providing automatic snap points at the defined Y value levels. In addition, if we move to the specific Add Columns facility under the Create menu when defining columns, we can say that we want to define a column between defined levels. So we can say we would wish to define a column between level 1 and level 2 with any additional offsets. The columns will then be precisely located between the values specified in the levels. This concludes this short video on the advantages of using levels in MasterFrame. In our next video, we're going to be looking in greater detail at the various different methods to create structure in the Create menu.